Hi everyone, Arlen here. Well, I'm going to try a little something new today. I'm going to try to video myself making a big, huge burlap wreath for our front door. I'm going to be using that big wreath frame. I have all of my supplies lined up here. Of course, I'll show you pictures in my blog as well. Close-up pictures of everything. But my hubby has me all set up here with our new little video camera that we got on our for our Hawaiian vacation. So hopefully I can get this to work. Also, I have a little gluing station over here. And this is usually the, how I start my wreaths. I glue pipe cleaners onto the back of these big accent pieces. These are quite heavy. These are made out of resin and they're really heavy. And these stars are actually metal. This is a wooden birdhouse, but I will glue pipe cleaners onto the back of everything so that I can secure them on the wreath. Say hi, Oops. Sam. Say hi to everyone. That's Sam. Hello, Sam. He is so excited, he can't send it. There's Sophie over there. Hi, Soph. I don't know where Gracie is. Oh, there she is, she's asleep. Behind the chair. Okay, let's get started. Alrighty, here we are at my gluing station here. And I'm going to start by feeding a pipe cleaner through this little hook here. And then I'll tell you the truth, I'm going to glue it down as well. So we have double the adherence. All right, the very first thing that I did on this wreath was to attach this metal scrolly piece to the metal wreath form. And I did that using a little bit of floral wire. So I only did it in three places, and this will be the fourth here. But you wanna make sure that you double loop your wire to make it pretty tight. So pull it around once and actually you want to pull really tight, as tight as you can and then go ahead and loop it again and then that way it will secure it a little better. Make it so it won't hit into the door when you hang the wreath. Alright, the next thing is to start putting the burlap into the chenille pipe cleaners. And I normally start on the outer ring. This burlap, by the way, is 18 inches by 15 feet. And it is going to take me every bit of this skein and probably a whole nother one to get twice around this wreath. So here we go. I usually pull out a good bit of one, of one of the rolls first. And then I gather it with it, leaving a little bit of a tail and hang on to it and then lay it right in to one of the chenille pipe cleaners. I leave a little tail so that I can tuck it into the back and hide it later. So then all we do start doing is start looping it and moving from one tie to the next. And I usually leave, oh, I would say about anywhere from 10 to 11 inches between each tie. And that makes a nice big loop, as you can see. Catch it there. And on around we go. And I tell you, I eyeball it. There is no right or wrong to this. This is just, and I don't even know whether this is the right way to do it because this is just the way I taught myself how to do it. So, you know, there is no right or wrong to wreath making or to crafting for that matter. It is, you do whatever you think looks nice to your eye and then you'll be happy with it. 
That's the way I look at things. Okay, as y'all can see, I have barely made it around with one skein. So what I'm gonna do is end this skein right here. You can see I've left a little tuck on the end so that I can tuck it behind. And then when I go and start with my next one, I'm gonna start right on top of this same pipe cleaner right here. So here's where I started. And I need to go from here to here and then transfer over to the inner. All right. So here we go. Got my second skein of burlap. And I tough it just like I did to begin with. And I kind of put it, kind of point it toward the center so that I can easily tuck it down in there. And I add it right to the top of where I just ended. And I loop it on around. These twist ties are pretty long, so you can fit a good bit in there. I'm going to put that on the floor and just let it unroll. Because I think I'm going to need the whole thing. And I might even need to add a little bit more. So as I finish off this row, you can see I'm going to go right in to the twist tie where I started. I'm going to go right there. And I'm going to try to angle the burlap to go toward the inner ring because that's where I'm heading next. And here we go to the inner ring. And we just work our way around just like we did around the outer ring. I'm going to speed up now. See you back when I get to the end here. All right, as you guys can see, I've got three twist ties to go. And I've only got this much burlap, so I am gonna have to add, open up a third skein of burlap. Wow, that just shows you how big this wreaths can get. I might be going a little crazy on my tufting here, but I like a big wreath, so bigger the better in my opinion. Plus our house sits pretty far back from the road and this wreath is for outside. So I want to make it so that people can see it when they look back to our house. Hopefully this will make a pretty good statement out there. Okay. I'm going to end this skein right here. Wow. And I'm going to trim off a little bit of this so that I can just tuck it. Back behind between the two rungs. And all I need is just from there to there to there to there. So not very much. But it would look pretty silly if I didn't finish it off. So I've got to finish it. So here's my third skein. I'm going to kind of put it this way so I can tuck that little end piece down in between. My rings with burlap. And I'm going to cut this off. Well, I had to take a little break because I nipped myself with my own scissors. There we go. That was pleasant. So I had to bandage myself up. So anyway, back to the wreath. Tucking that last piece back down underneath between the rungs, and there we have it. You can see, usually, I will take a pipberry garland and I will attach it around into each outer ring's twist tie. But today, I don't have 
one. I didn't want to take the time to order one from the Pitberry Barn, which is where, usually where I get it. So I stopped at one of my local stores here in town and I picked up some of these pretty red berries. So I thought I would try to cut off a tuft and put a tuft of these, kind of bend them up and put a tuft of these in each outer rings, just twist tie. Trust me too, these twist ties you will see as we go along, they'll kind of hide themselves. There we go, I think that's gonna look all right. So let's work our way around here and see how this goes. Hopefully I'll have enough tufts. Again, I'm making this up as I go. Never done one like this before, as you all probably know, who follow my blog. This is a new one on me, with these little red berries like this. So, again, just be creative and trust yourself. Always trust yourself. That, you know, you're going to create something that looks pretty. If it looks pretty to you, it's going to look pretty to somebody else, I'm sure. And again, it does not have to be perfect. There's no perfect thing in nature that we look at. No tree looks perfect. No red berry bush looks perfect. So why would your wreath need to be perfect? It wouldn't. It's just going to come together, I hope. We'll see. There we go. And the last one. There we go. Alrighty, so there we go. That's the basic concept of the wreath. Now I'm going to make a bow. I'm going to probably use almost this whole skin. Hang on, I'll be right back and need a pipe cleaner. Or two, actually. Here. To start by unrolling it. In fact, I'm just gonna let it drop to the floor and I hold, pull out a good long length of a tail. That, this will be one of the tails. And then you pinch it together up here. Can you guys see? Hopefully you can see. And you, and you make a loop. And then this is, we're gonna have to twist because it's a two-sided burlap ribbon. And this is really, really really thick and hard to handle so you might want to practice on some other types of ribbon before you start out with something like this because this is difficult to manipulate anyway we're going to try, give it our best i'm pretty much just going to pile one loop on top of the next on top of the next for this bow take it out a little bit further with each layer of two loops. Twist it. Take a pipe cleaner and wrap it all the way around. And I'm going to put the loop on separately. The, the center bow loop, I'm going to put it on separately. And I'm going to mess with it, tweak it, and full around with it and it'll be the way I want it by the time I put it on the wreath. Now I'm going to cut one and I do my scissors after I cut myself. I probably threw them away. <laughs> here they are over here. I'm going to cut. See I have one long tail. I'm going to cut this one a little bit longer and I'm going to cut myself another piece so that I can make the loop for the center of the bow. I have that much ribbon left on that whole bowl. I almost used the whole thing. So I'm gonna turn this kind of over on itself like this. And scrunch it together underneath. Feed my pipe cleaner through, another pipe cleaner through and put it 
right in the center of this bow. And pull the pipe cleaner around. Catch that with your pipe with your thumb underneath there. Pull it around. Hold it tight. And there we go. There's the bow. I'm going to go ahead and tie this bow, I think, onto the ring. Turn this back around a little bit. And I think this is going to be the top of the wreath. And I want the bow to start. And what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to tuck them both together and kind of do it the way, the same way I did the the um, burlap. I'm going to catch it only on the inner, one of the inner twist ties. Try not to catch the berries. And I'm going to hold the tails down that way, right in there. There we go. And then that leaves me with two kind of pretty tails. And the way I make the tails look pretty is I fold it in half and I go to the edge. Try not to cut yourself when you're doing this. And cut toward the center. And that gives you two points to your tails. I want this one a little bit longer. So here's the birdhouse. And as you can see, the uh, pipe cleaners are good and glued on there. And again, you just have to find a, find a place. I'm going to put it kind of low down here like this. And you just need to find that inner or outer ring, which however it falls or wherever it lands is the ring. Start to look, start to come together. That's the top right there, like that. All right, next. Oh, let's see. I don't know. I'm going to fool around with the, the stars and the resin daisies and see where I think I want to put And of course, until you hang it up, you really don't know exactly how it's going to look. Add it right here, right in this part of the handy dandy hot glue gun here. Just work my way around. All right, I'm gonna hang it up and I'll be right back. Pretty happy with how it turned out. I hope that my explanations were helpful to you and that you will try to do one of these on your own. Until next time, y'all take good care. Bye bye.